All right, welcome back. The product rule is a rule that allows us to take the derivative of two functions multiplied together. And so if we have two functions, f of x and g of x, we want to know what is the derivative of their product. And it's not going to be as easy as multiplying the derivative of f of x times the derivative of g of x. In fact, it's going to be a little bit more complicated, but it is actually not too bad. So here we have the product rule, and it says that if we have the derivative of two functions multiplied together, it's going to be equal to the derivative of our first function times the original second function plus the original first function times the derivative of the second function. So let's see what this looks like with an example. So if we want to find the derivative of the function 4x minus 7 times x cubed minus 3, how would we find the derivative of that? Well, first we'll see right here that we have two functions, right? We have 4x minus 7 and x cubed minus 3. And so we can say that f of x in this case is going to be equal to 4x minus 7 and g of x is going to be equal to x cubed minus 3. And so then let's take the derivative of each of these functions and then we'll be able to find the derivative of this by using this product rule. So f prime of x is going to be equal to just 4, right? Because 4x, the derivative is 4, and the derivative of negative 7 would be 0. So we'd have 4 plus 0. So we're just left with 4. And then the derivative of g of x, or g prime of x, would be equal to 3x squared, right? Because we have this x cubed. So we, if we multiply our exponent down, we'd have 3x. And then we subtracted 1 from our exponent to get that squared. And of course, the derivative of negative 3 is 0. So we're left with just 3x squared. So now we have f of x, the derivative of f of x, g of x, and the derivative of g of x. So then we can use all of these functions to plug into our product rule, and we can find the derivative of this function. And so this would be equal to f prime of x, which we said is 4, multiplied by the function g of x, which is x cubed minus 3, plus the original function f of x, which we said is 4x minus 7, multiplied by g prime of x, which we said is 3x squared. So we'll have 3x squared. And so this would be the derivative of this function. Now we could simplify this a little bit. We could distribute this 4 to each part of this quantity and then distribute this 3x squared to each part of this quantity and simplify. And if we did that, our final answer would be 16x cubed plus 21x squared minus 12. And so that would be the derivative if we were to go through all the simplification. So if you want to, you can go through and you can simplify that and see if you get this answer. But that's going to be the process of the product rule. We have two functions being multiplied together and then we're going to follow this rule. So when you're first learning how to use this rule, it might be helpful to write out these functions. Write out what your f of x is, what the derivative of that function is, and then go through g of x and find that derivative and then just plug them in to your rule. But let's look at another example. So here we want to know the derivative of x times sine x. And I have our product rule down here that we can reference if we need to remember what it is. And so in this derivative, we have two functions. We have the function x and we have the function sine x. And so those are our two functions that are being multiplied together that are giving us a product. And that's why we need to use the product rule. So this is going to be equal to the derivative of the first function, which is x, and the derivative of x is just one, and then multiplied by the original second function, so that would be sine of x, right? So, so far we have done this part of our product rule. We took the derivative of the first function, multiplied it by the second function, and now we're going to add the original first function, which is just x, right? That was this part of our rule. And then we're gonna multiply it by the derivative of our second function, which in this case is cosine x, because the derivative of sine of x is cosine x. And then we can simplify. This is going to be equal to sine x plus x cosine x. And that is the answer to our derivative. It's not too difficult when you have pretty simple functions like x and sine x. So let's look at a little bit more of a complicated example. All right, so here's the next example. We have the function f of x is equal to the square root of x times the quantity nine minus x squared. And we wanna find the derivative of that function. So we have a product of two functions. So we're gonna to have to use our product rule. Our first function would be the square root of x and our second function would be nine minus x squared. And so before we take a derivative of this, let's just quickly redefine f of x because we like to redefine the square root of x to have that one half power so we can more easily see how to use our power rule for that derivative. So we'll just say that f of x 
is equal to x to the 1 half power times 9 minus x squared. All right, so now let's go ahead and take our derivative. So we'll have f prime of x is equal to the derivative of our first function, so the derivative of x to the 1 half power, and that will be 1 half times x to the 1 half minus 1, times the original second function, so we'll have 9 minus x squared, plus the original first function, so that's gonna be x to the 1 half power, multiplied by the derivative of the second function. And so in that case, we're taking the derivative of this quantity, which would be zero for this nine, because the derivative of a constant is zero, and then derivative of negative x squared is going to be negative two x. And we got that from using our power rule. So now that we have finished using our product rule, let's go through and simplify our answer. We're gonna have that this is equal to one half times x to the negative one half power times nine minus x squared, plus, and now we're going to multiply this x to the 1 half power by this negative 2x, and that's going to get us negative 2 times x to the 3 halves power. Because when you multiply two variables, like x to the 1 half power and x, you just add their exponents, so 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. So we can simplify this one more time. We can bring this quantity to the top of this fraction and move this variable to the denominator so that we have a positive exponent. And then we will have nine minus x squared over two times x to the one half power or the square root of x minus two x to the three halves power. And that would be our derivative using the product rule for this function. All right, so one thing you need to know about the product rule is that it can be expanded to the product of multiple functions, right? Sometimes you'll get functions that aren't just the product of two functions, but are the product of three functions and maybe four or five. We're only gonna look at three here because this is probably the most you will ever see. You're most likely not going to encounter products of four or more functions. You just don't typically see that. And so this is probably the most you will see and it's pretty similar to the product of two functions, except we have a third term that we're going to be working with. And so the way this works is that if we have three functions, f of x, g of x, and h of x, the derivative of their product is going to be equal to the derivative of the first function multiplied by the other two original functions. And then we're going to have the original first function times the derivative of the second function times the original third function plus the original first two functions times the derivative of the third function. So the pattern here is that we have three terms of all the functions where in each term we're taking the derivative of a different function. In the first term we're taking the derivative of f of x, in the second term we're taking the derivative of g of x, and in the third term we're taking the derivative of h of x. And so let's take a look at what an example would look like in this case. So if we had the derivative, let's say, of x sine x cosine x, what would that look like? Well, the first thing we want to do is to identify what our three functions are that were being multiplied. And that would be x as our f of x, sine of x as our g of x, and cosine x as our h of x. So now we can say that this is going to be equal to the derivative of our first function. So we're gonna have the derivative of x, which is just one, times sine x cosine x, right? We only take the derivative of one function at a time. Then we just multiply by the other two functions plus the original first function times the derivative of the second function. So we'll have the derivative of sine x, which we know is cosine x, and then multiplied by cosine x, which is our original third function. And then we'll add our final term, which is going to be the original first two functions, f of x and g of x. So we'll have x sine of x, multiplied by the derivative of cosine x, and that's going to be negative sine x. And so then we could simplify this, and we'd have that our answer is going to be equal to sine x cosine x plus x cosine squared x minus x sine squared x. And that would be our derivative of this function, right? So we simplify this to just being these two functions times one. So it's just these two functions. And then we multiplied these two cosine terms. So we had cosine squared x. And then we have these two sine terms that became sine squared x. And then we brought out this negative sign. And so that is where this answer comes from. So that's kind of a neat thing that the product rule can be expanded to the product of more than just two functions, but also do three functions. And it can also do four and five, but like I said earlier, you're not gonna see those typically. And so let's do one more example where we use the product rule for three functions. Here we have y equals three x plus one 
times the quantity x minus 5 times the quantity 2x plus 3, we want to know what the derivative of y is. And again, I have a rule down here so that you can reference it as we go through this derivative. So I have y prime is going to be equal to the derivative of our first function. And so before we even get started, let's quickly identify what our three functions are. I would say that f of x is 3x plus 1, g of x is going to be x minus 5, and our third function, h of x, is going to be 2x plus 3. So we'll take the derivative of our first function because that is the first part of our whole product rule here. So we'll have 3 because the derivative of 3x is going to be 3 and derivative of 1 is 0 multiplied by our two other functions. So x minus 5 and 2x plus 3 plus the original first function. So 3x plus 1 times the derivative of the second function. So we're going to have the derivative of x minus 5, which is just 1, right? The derivative of x is 1 and the derivative of negative 5 will be 0. So this would just be 1. I don't even need to write that, but I'll do it so that you can line it up with this rule down here. And then we'll multiply by the original third function. And then we'll add our final term, which is going to be the first two functions multiplied by the derivative of the final function. So we're going to have 3x plus 1 times x minus 5 times the derivative of 2x plus 3, which is just going to be 2 because the derivative of 2x is 2 and the derivative of 3 is 0. So we'll have 2. And so this right here would be the derivative of this function. Now, you could go through and you could simplify this by distributing this 3 and then multiplying this and then you could, you know, there's a lot of expanding that could be done here. But if you're just asked to find a derivative, you could keep it in this state right here. However, if you are interested in knowing, this does simplify to 18x squared minus 38x minus 52. So if you want to go through the work and check that, you can, but these two functions are going to be the same. So these would both be acceptable answers for the derivative of this function using our product rule. All right, and so that's all there is for this lesson on the product rule. If you want to see more examples, I will have them in an example video that will be linked at the end of this video as well as being in the description. So I would very much recommend that you watch those examples. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will get to them. But if you don't have any questions, that's all for now. So I will see you next time.